Okay. Good afternoon. From the 403 to the HAZ, Mr. Nelson here. Pre-Cal 12. Hallelujah, we're moving on. We, uh, you guys should be finishing up trig. Trick one, two, and three now, and now we're moving into combinatorics, which I I like because I think it has it has a lot of real world applications. Combinatorics is essentially the cousin of probability, and of uh, probabilities related to statistics. So all three of these kind of make a super a super unit, but we're only going to talk about combinatorics in uh, in pre cal twelve. And combinatorics is essentially just the uh, investigation of the different way we can arrange things um, and combinatorics the, the big two uh, the big two concepts in combinatorics are permutations where order of how we're, or, how we're arranging things counts and combinations or uh, combinations so permutations and combinations combinations doesn't care about the order um, so it's like how many ways can I select Five, how many different ways can I select five letters from the alphabet, right? So it doesn't matter if you choose E first or if you choose E last. As long as you choose E and it's in there, that's a combination. Permutations, however, would, if you're choosing five letters from the alphabet, it would be concerned with, well, did you choose A first or did you choose A last? Because that's different. Whereas combinatorics would say, as long as I've chosen A, I've chosen A. But we'll talk about that more. I'm just kind of giving you a little sneak peek. Um, but in order to work with combinatorics, uh, we need to first address just a couple kind of foundational concepts, okay? And those foundational concepts are related to the fundamental counting principle. And essentially the fundamental counting principle tells us that if I can... Um, if I can do task A, um, if I could do task A n different ways, right? So say, how many ways can I um, choose a letter from an alphabet? Well, 26 ways, right? So if I can do that, if I can do a certain uh, um, um, task that many ways, and I can do a different task, M ways, so say how many ways can I choose a, uh, a letter from the alphabet and how many ways can I choose a number from 1 to 10? Well, the way that I can do, the, the total amount of ways that I can do this task and this task is simply N times M, okay? That is a fundamental counting principle. Now, what does that, look like? I hope I explained that right, but let's look at it, okay? So what does that mean in practice? Well. Let's say I have the letters A, B, C, and we'll do D as well, okay? And I want to know how many ways can I arrange those letters? How many different ways can I, can I arrange those letters? Well, if we, uh, we now have, this would be A, this would be B, I'm talking about task A, task B, this will be task C, task D, okay? They're not, I'm going to use different letters just to, uh, so let's say I had uh, T, U, D, W. How many ways could I, okay, so this is my first task, is choosing the first, is choosing the first letter that's going to go in the first slot. And I can do that how many different ways? I can do that four different ways, right? I can choose a four letters. The next task, we'll call that task B. How many letters am I, like if I, if I put one letter here, if one of the four goes here, how many letters am I gonna be allowed to choose from for the second task? It's gonna be three. Now I have three to choose from, okay? C, there's only gonna be two letters left, and D, there should only be one letter left. And based on the fundamental counting principle to figure out all the, the total amount of ways that I can do this, this, uh, this task is to multiply these together. And I get 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 1 is 24. I can arrange the letters T, U, V, W 24 different unique ways. And I got that from the fundamental counting principle. Um, let's see, if, should I do another example? Yeah. So here's another example of that. Let's say I have... 
let's see, I have um, five chairs. Okay, I've got five chairs and I've got five students. Five different students. We'll call the students J, K, L, M, N as J for Jason, K for Caitlin, L for Liam, M for Matt, N for and for Nelson. Woo! Nelson, there we go. Okay. How many different ways can I arrange, how many different unique ways can I arrange these students in the five chairs? Now, order matters, right? This is chair one, chair two, chair three, chair four. Well, how many students can I pick from for the first chair? Five. Okay. How many students can I choose for the second chair? Well, I'm going to have lost one student here, so it's going to be four. And then I'm going to have three students to choose from for the third seat, two left here, and then one left there. And again, to figure out the number of different um, ways I can arrange these students in the chairs, I just have to multiply five times four times three times two times one. Okay, and in doing so I get 20, 60, 120. I can arrange these students in 120 unique ways, where seat one is right here and seat five is here. And it's important that I keep track of the order. Now we're gonna talk, when we get into comb combinations, the order doesn't really matter anymore, right? So, but in this case, there's only, if this was a combination and order doesn't matter, there's only one way I can choose five students from the five students here, right? There's only one way versus 120 when the order that I put them in matters. And so this leads us into the common, the, 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 the mathematical concept of factorial. Factorial. Okay. And factorial just says when I get into a situation like this, or a situation like the last one where I was, uh, where I was arranging the letters A, B, C, and D, unique combinations for order matters. And this one I had four times three times two times one. Okay. I can rewrite this as five factorial. I can rewrite this as four factorial. What does five factorial mean? Five factorial just means five times four times three times two times one. 4 factorial just means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Basically, all the numbers that, that leading up to that number, we, we multiply together. So what would 3 factorial be? It would be 3 times 2 times 1. What would 8 factorial be? It would be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. What would 2 factorial, 3 factorial be? Well, it would be 2 times 1 times 3 times 2 times 1. What would 4 factorial, 3 factorial, 5 factorial be? Well, it would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 5 times 4 times, what the heck is that? Times 4 times three, times two, times one. Big number, okay? That is factorial. It's, it's, a new, it's a new operational sign. Just like multiplication, division, factorial is a mathematical symbol that we use quite often. So, that is, those are the fundamentals. That's what we just need to, to kind of acknowledge is the fundamental counting principle here and factorial, which is a shorthand. Now, in these examples that I did here, there were, there were a couple um, assumptions I made, right? Uh, the first is that there was, well, not, they weren't assumptions. My examples just um, didn't include certain things. The first was uh, repetitions, okay? I had no repetitions here. When I chose A, B, C, D, 
That's different than if I would have said, well, how, how, can you let, how can you arrange the letters A, A, C, and D? Okay? A is the same as A. So these, these two are rep repeated, and that creates a different case. And in essence, what, what happens in that case is it becomes four factorial, just like over here, but then I divide by two factorial for my repetitions. I have two repetitions, two factorial. If I had A, 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 D, it would be three factorial down here. So we'll talk about that in the next video. And then the other, the other thing we didn't talk about is uh, restrictions. Okay, when I give you certain restrictions on what you can do. So an example for that up here was how many ways can I arrange these students if the, th the third chair has always has to be student L? There's a restriction. And in this case, it would be, um, well, it would be four factorial times three factorial. No, it would be four factorial. No, sorry, it would be 4 times 3 times 1 times 2 times 1. There wouldn't actually be a, uh, a formula for this one like there was down here. But in the next video, we'll talk about all of that. Um, at this point, we just need to know that when we are arranging um, unique, when we are arranging items that there's no repetitions and no restrictions, we can just basically use the amount of items that are factorial, and that will tell us how many ways we can arrange them.